Um, well, good morning or afternoon, depending where you're calling in from. I'm Lucy Ide. I'm um, uh, the founder of Remedy and now our chief health and innovation officer. So Remedy is a company based in Atlanta, Georgia, but have been working in California for quite a long time now with some great partners there. And um, our mission is really to help optimize clinical outcomes. RPM is a big part of what we do, but it is certainly not everything we do. So we have a deep history and sort of workflow optimization, clinical decision support, and patient engagement. And so I will present in this RPM focused context, um, try to address the breadth of, of what we do and um, specifically in high risk and underserved populations. Um, you know, our opinion of how we get to the healthcare system of the future um, is aligned with some of the points that were made by the panel and by Grace and her presentation of, you know, moving towards this continuous model of care, fully utilizing data, both from the home as well as the electronic medical record. Um, and we also do bring in patient reported outcomes measures into that equation to really give a holistic view of the patients, um, especially focused on patients with chronic conditions. Um, and, you know, as a physician by background, I'm, you know, really aware of sort of the all-consuming nature of workflows in the electronic health record, and that this has to be part of that EHR-driven workflow and that data from the patient in the home, whether it's device data, wearable data, um, patient-reported outcomes data, has to all be brought into that existing workflow. So is I sort of give an overview of our platform, there are really four key components to that. There's the integration into the workflow piece. So we were a very early adopter of Smart on Fire, if you're familiar with that. Fire being the widely adopted common um, API interface between EHRs and really all health data today um, in the government as well. So we've been at that for a long time. We were one of the first applications in Cerner um, and Epic as they moved into that. And today we're in Cerner, Epic, NextGen, Athena, and can really work with any of the um, EHRs that support FHIR. Um, clinical decision support, right? So um, CDS hooks, again, for people who are familiar with technology is like the next um, sort of chapter in the story around FHIR and interoperability. And all that means is um, all of us in the industry agreeing on how we do clinical decision support and how we do that in the workflow in a really nimble and configurable and customizable way. Um, so I'll show you more what I mean by that. Um, patient engagement and education. Um, so, you know, again, helping keep this connectivity across the continuum with patients at home. Um, patient education is part of that. So we do offer digital education courses, sort of a Netflix on-demand version of traditional patient education that might have happened in a hospital or in the clinic. Um, for those patients who just can't access that face-to-face -face education for various reasons. Um, and then remote patient monitoring, as we're talking about today. Um, and so we use these core pillars of our platform to support the use cases I'm showing in the middle. So we take a very um, sort of problem-oriented, disease-centric um, approach. And again, across diabetes, fatty liver disease, heart failure, cardiovascular, so um, hypertension falls into that, obesity, and then um, some COVID work, right? Like everybody else over the past eight months. Um, that to click, there we go. And so, you know, our, our goal is recognizing it's very hard for clinics and health systems to interact with a lot of different vendors um, to solve one particular problem, right? So trying to provide multiple benefits and sort of address all of the needs for any particular use case in one platform. Um, and so again, you know, solving that workflow integration piece with the EMR integration, um, helping plug in the patient engagement and education. So we do have two-way messaging built into the platform to be able to message back and forth with patients as well as integrated patient reported outcomes, which we actually leverage text messaging to deliver those, but being able to bring those into the platform, write them back directly into the EMR. Um, and as well as, you know, sort of bridging the quality measure piece. Um, you know, so all of you, I'm sure, report out on quality measures, both internally 
but then externally to your payers and to CMS and helping um, really bridge that from sort of quality measures being one thing to report and clinical decision support being a different thing that happens at the point of care. We need to get alignment of those two is that's a, really a single effort, right, with different endpoints to it. Um, and then I'll talk a lot about the remote patient monitoring piece of this. So before I jump into sort of talking about how we do this, I thought it might be interesting to share some recent data we have on patient satisfaction with being part of a remote patient monitoring program. And not only their satisfaction with devices and ease of use, but also sort of how does it change their perspective on their relationship? So one of the questions we asked was, you know, since starting this remote patient monitoring program, how do you feel about your healthcare provider? And, you know, I think we all would assume and hope that this would be out the outcome, but the majority of people say they feel more connected to their healthcare provider. Um, when we've done this a couple of years ago, folks, you know, had the perception that they were actually seeing their healthcare provider more in person, even though they weren't. And then another really important piece is, you know, how difficult is your device to use, right? And, and I think we all know that that's been a barrier with some of the early devices. Um, and so 78% of participants here saying that they felt the devices were very easy to use. So I'll share a bit more data at the end of the presentation, but just wanted to start out with that, um, that little bit. So as I mentioned, our, our approach is really this sort of problem-oriented disease-specific view. Um, and so I thought I'd share on screen here for maybe folks who aren't as familiar with um, how applications can run in the EHR workflow. So this is Cerner, Millennium EMR. And being a, you know, what they call a smart on fire app allows us to sort of run within the experience here. So the gray and blue part of this is Cerner. The white background is actually our application running in Cerner. So you could be in your um, regular workflow in that patient context. If you click on Remedy, up comes our screen. We have all of the data shown here is coming from the EMR. We're calculating some risk scores and alerts and insights about that data, but there's no additional sign on there and all of the data sharing is sort of real time behind the scenes. So as I walk through sort of helping you understand more of what our experience and patient journey is like, keep this in mind that within that EMR workflow, you know, you're in a patient context and then in that in and out of the application as if it were part of that EMR. Um, same with Epic and, and I mentioned the clinical decision support. Epic has um, really great sort of innate support for CVS uh, within their workflow. And so we can actually um, prompts and surface alerts and insights directly within Epic without even being in our application. And, and the others are all moving in this direction as well. So, um, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, we work across really the whole spectrum of cardiometabolic diseases, and we have remote monitoring solutions for all of those. I'm going to choose diabetes as a patient journey and use case um, example to, to show you what we mean by this sort of this end to end solution. And so from a clinician point of view, you know, we're really looking at the holistic view of what's happening with that patient's disease, in this case, diabetes. Um, and so we're surfacing to the clinician and sort of mapping against guidelines where this patient stands at this moment in time in terms of the screenings and medications and um, vital signs and labs and, you know, how are they doing against guidelines. A big part of this is the remote monitoring data. So in that same screen, we show also the remote monitoring data that's coming from the patient at home. Um, I'm a huge fan of the cellular enabled devices. So we have cellular enabled um, blood pressure cuffs, glucometers, scales. We do support Bluetooth devices as well. Um, and we support continuous glucose monitoring like Dexcom um, and as well as connected insulin pens. So whatever that data is that the patient has, that, those accounts are connected and the data is streaming into our system within that EMR workflow. Um, we have a bunch of different ways to really try to help clinicians visualize the data in the way they're used to. Um, diabetes, I think, is very particular this way that there's, you know, a lot of people have different ways they like to see glucose data. But, you know, that's only the beginning of the story, right, of getting the data from the patient in the home in a really frictionless way. And again, you know, I, I hugely um, recommend these cellular-enabled devices when possible because it gets you over the hurdle with 
you know, Wi-Fi access, internet access, pairing frustrations, the, the beauty of the patient just being able to use their device and have the, have the data go is, is really tremendous. Um, and then, you know, for any one patient in context, that rolls up to sort of your whole population of patients who are part of that RPM um, program. And a question was asked earlier about sort of how does my system, you know, or my clinic have input on, you know, what are the boundaries of normal and abnormal and, and when do I want to be alerted and how does that work? So um, we use these patient registries, which is really usually the home of the workflow for the care teams who are monitoring these patients. And we set up the alerting based on, you know, boundaries for things like glucose, but also based on the rest of those clinical decision support prompts, meaning if this patient has a gap in care, has an opportunity to, um, you know, be more adherent with guidelines or improve their outcome, we can figure alerts for your health system with your, you know, partnership and input. And then those alerts um, both show up on this patient registry um, and can be prioritized here as well as in the individual patient context. Um, just to briefly mention, I think patient reported outcomes, um, you know, is, is sort of been this parallel thing to remote patient monitoring and, and to us, they're really part of the same story, right? Having the patient have their voice as to what's going on with them, whether it's a standardized um, PRO, like a depression screen, or whether it's something, um, custom and unique to your health system. We can generate these programmatically, you can send them on demand, um, but it sends a text message to the patient, they do it on any internet enabled device and the data comes back into our program, but also gets written back into the EMR as well. And so as we sort of walk through this journey, right, of having a patient who's connected at home, the data is coming in, it's getting merged with their clinical data, and driving insights about what can I do? Um, you know, what's the next best step in care? What are the gaps in care for this patient? This is an example of one of our clinical decision support prompts in a patient context. Um, in this case, focused on say a medication gap in care. If your system was interested in, you know, we're really not adhering to guidelines in terms of um, sort of medications around diabetes, we can build a pathway for that. Um, that allows you to prompt your clinicians and allows you to capture what action they take about that. Um, and then sort of, you know, the last part, sort of the beginning and the end of this journey, right, is how well managed um, are these chronic diseases across your population? So we do a lot of work with clients to baseline that at the beginning to target the particular patients. I saw a question in the Q&A earlier about um, you know, you can't monitor all of the patients, so who do you decide to monitor? And, and that is part of our process is working with sites to help figure out what those criteria are and onboard those patients. Um, but then to continuously report out, right? How, how are we tracking? Are we moving the needle on those um, key performance indicators? And then, you know, as part of RPM, and I'm sure a lot of folks, um, have been familiar with this, you know, the, the tracking of the activity and while it's been challenging for reimbursement for FQHCs and um, we've spent a lot of time lobbying on that topic over the past year, um, you know, we'll get there, um, I believe, in terms of reimbursement for FQHCs for RPM and, um, you know, then you have to be able to track the activity and report out on it for billing purposes. So this is built into the platform sort of timekeeping and the ability to document the specific activity that was taken for that patient and then to report out on that across your whole clinic. So many of our sites, you know, will um, run these reports at the end of the month and it aggregates the time per patient per activity for billing purposes. So trying to really make that um, quite streamlined. Um, the education, I don't want to not come back to this, um, just to give you a feel, you know, diabetes self-management education um, has been really stagnant in the number of patients who've had access to that. I think, you know, 4% of Medicaid patients on average and only about 7% of all patients get access to DSMES. And so a couple of years ago, we built these sort of on-demand video-based courses. Um, these have exclusively to date been deployed and um, hard to reach communities, um, you know, some clinics that serve homeless patients and clinics that serve mostly uninsured patients. And we have some really great engagement and outcomes numbers there. Um, and so we've done the same for weight management um, and fatty liver disease. 
again, an area that's hard to get, um, have the time in clinic to spend educating patients and get that needed education to them. Um, so I'll kind of close by wrapping back to these patient um, outcome measures and, and patient satisfaction of, you know, I think this is a hugely important one of self-efficacy. How do you feel about your ability to manage your healthcare condition? And, you know, 70% of patients say they feel better about that. This is across diabetes, hypertension, and heart failure. Um, and, you know, I think another question folks have is what's the relationship of the remote monitoring to in-clinic? Is it replacing it? Is it supplementing it? And so we wanted to get patients' perspectives on that. And the majority of them think that it does supplement face-to-face -face, um, appointments, but you know some think it replaces it. It may, it may not um, have them have to have so many appointments face-to-face um, -face with their clinicians. So I see a bunch of questions have popped up in the Q and A, so I can try to get to those um, now.